uh, I think we can do better than just buying from different countries, right? But maybe joint ventures with some of the mid-level countries like India or more than mid-level like South Korea is perhaps the way forward? Yes, uh, joint venture and tech transfer goes hand in hand. And of course, babalik tayo yung conversation natin earlier, uh, yung foundation yun. Ang foundation muna would be you uh, for tech transfer uh, to take place, you also need to develop yung industrial capacity. Uh, and of course, yung STEM, yung, yung, yung human wear mo. Now, ang kagandahan dito, uh, yung sa Indonesia naman, uh, actually na, na malung, nakakalungkot yun. Kasi we're buying, the Air Force is buying aircraft from Indonesia. Okay. Mga But, trainer, you know, trainer, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, transport, light transport. Oh, yeah, transport. even the light transport. Not to mention yung mga barko din natin, ako kukuha natin sa kanila, di ba? Uh, uh, or, but, yung, 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 Industry nila na yun. Pinag-aralan nila yung 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 corporation natin dito sa Pilipinas. Binalik nila sa Indonesia. And they they made good with the running up, running that concept. Sa atin naman nag-fold up, hindi nag-prosper yun. Okay, parang ano to eh, yung yung same situation as yung iri, yung rice. Yeah, so rice, Vietnam, Thailand learning from us and oh, they learn from us. Then Niluto tayo sa sarili natin mantika. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, yung yung sa Indonesia naman yung shipyard yung shipyard I think quality wise we're still we're better than them in terms of quality. Uh, but they're just better in terms of ano eh, yung running ano eh, running that industry. And uh hindi ko alam uh, there are some factors here that uh, actually ano eh, that prevents us from uh, progressing. I mean, uh, Admiral, as my understanding of Indonesia is that they have a number of large state-owned, state-backed uh, enterprises involved in the production of advanced weapon systems, which President Jokowi discussed when he visited uh, Manila. Then. I mean, I'm not sure if the Philippines is in that position, but in terms of our private sector, are there particular oligarchs? <laughs> For the lack of a better term, are there oligarchs there in the Philippines that you think could be a positive contributor here? I mean, in In India, it's Tata, right? The Tata company is involved in everything, car production. I mean, pretty modernized, you know, some of the, you know, quote-unquote oligarchs in India. Do you think we can have a version of that? I mean, my understanding is like Ayala, for instance, getting into electric uh, bike production. There are also discussions on joint venture with EV companies and EV production. Are, are there anyone on the horizon or are we, or is this just a wish list or something? Visual thinking. Anyway, babalik tayo rin. It's not profitable. Nobody will uh, undertake that activity. Now, there was a time na when we were looking at yung uh, uh, getting two, two more amphibious yung, uh, vessels, no? yung, yung uh, second tranche ng Tarlaclas na uh, LPD. And uh, BND was trying to look at the idea of having a joint director na tapos dito gagawin sa Pilipinas yung, ano, yung two yung yung second tranche na position na instead of sa Indonesia or sa South Korea. But ang, ang learning namin doon was yung yung current capacity ng ating shipyards sa Pilipinas cannot absorb transfer of technology yet. So maraming pa kailangan gagawin ng work para doon. It's not as simple as joint venture din gagawin na dito. Okay. So we go back to industrial capacity at human wear aspect of uh, for, for gas in for us to go into uh, serious uh, undertakings such as uh, uh, building that. No? Ngayon, uh, one way of yung problem of profitability is if national government will be the customer. For example, uh, kasi most of our passenger vessels, commercial vessels, are ano eh, second-hand. Eh? I think they get, they, get, they get it from Japan. It's much cheaper than having it built here. But if a uh, national government would subsidize the project, okay, compel or uh, ask our local shipyards, uh, local shipping companies, passenger and commercial, to get their uh, vessels from our local shipyards, of course, with government trying to put up a para may guaranteed market ka, yes, I guarantee. Oh, may guaranteed market ka, then government will put up parang soft loan. You can pay it in X number of years later. Tapos, 
ang maganda ron, baka pwede uh, di, military specifications from passenger vessels sa kanyang commercial vessels. Such that uh, they can be used for disaster response, they can be used for troop transport, uh, they can be used as floating hospitals. Kasi nakam, yung design niya, pagka, ang pagka-construct niya, is designed as if it is a military or naval uh, vessel. Okay. Pero civilian companies are the one using it. So then they can be part of the uh, a larger auxiliary ng, uh, na, of our reserve force na later on, pag may emergency, o oh, sige, pahiram muna nung, ano mo, nung barko mo, ako bahala sa fuel niya, we'll just use it to transport troops or we'll just need it kasi merong, merong disaster response sa isang island. We need to convert yung ano mo to temporarily as a uh, evacuation area or a hospital. So parang ganun. So if national government is a guarantor, subsidizes the program, baka pwede ito yun. Yeah, industrial policy. Pag- right, this is a military yeah. industrial policy, yeah. Or defense industrial policy, sorry for that matter. I mean, are there um, are there like um best practices we can look at? I mean, for instance, I've been following the case of India under Modi over the past decade. You know, they have they have revised you know, uh, defense acquisition procurement uh, laws. They have focused more on developing their own domestic uh, capacity. Because India has been one of the largest importer of defense equipment. Uh, for a very long time, a lot of that from Russia and all, but now they're moving towards developing their own. Um, what are the best practices from comparable countries? I mean, the, the major masyadong advance advanced na in Japan and, and NATO countries, but you mga other developing countries or dati lang developing countries like South Korea. Um, I mean, I think we already discussed Indonesia to a certain degree. I mean, even Pakistan, di ba? Yung mga mas mahirap pa ng bansa sa atin na nakakadevelop sila ng military industrial complex and uh, and slightly more developed countries like Turkey, for instance, di ba? drone superpowers na sila eh. So, are there like kind of a, yun nga eh, parang ayoko na ang dating dito sa suntok sa buwan, di ba? At the same time, we don't want to be complacent or masyadong long standard. Kaya tinitingnan ko yung mga other middle size, middle income countries um, or or uh, rising developing countries like India, for instance, or Brazil. What are things that we can learn from them? Or are there some best practices in mind? Well, number one, yung ano, there must be a plan. It must be part of an industrial plan. Otherwise, uh, it's good for six years lang, then wala na. Okay. Then there must be buy-in from all stakeholders doon. So it's not it's not a political issue, but rather something that everybody can agree on. That it's something needs to be done, no matter who is in power. So kailangan depoliticize siya. Uh, another one would be, again, I mentioned, ano, we need to strengthen yung STEM natin, STEM education. Kasi uh, we have this, but saan pupunta yung graduates ng STEM education natin? Uh, they're not they're not staying here kasi wala wala kang ano eh, walang walang mag, walang catch system eh, walang sasalo sa kanila when they graduate. So dito, dito may tie up dapat yung STEM education infrastructure mo with yung yung labor force o yung yung market mo that will accept them. So at some point it needs to be a closed system pag kumaga o oh, sige, when you graduate, you come to me. Uh, when you graduate, they say from Philippine side, Philippine Science High School. Uh, after that, you go to college, you take this course, then after that, you are employed, guaranteed. Dito. Okay. Uh, you can serve for X number of years later on. You want to go abroad, then that's up to you. But Para at least, there are guarantees. Oh, my, 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 my conditional, you get the scholarship, but two years you have to go back, something like that. Oh. So, you need those, ano eh, kasi yung, you need those uh, base about to work with. Pangatlo, uh, it must be profit driven, of course. Okay. Uh, it's based on a realistic appreciation ng regional at global market. Uh, na, no, merong patutunguhan yan. So you don't have, hindi mo kailangan patulan lahat ng types of uh, equipment. Only those that will work for you. And it must be done at, at a much better, better, and uh, cheaper uh, way. Okay. So you, you mentioned about South Korea. South Korea started off with tech transfer. Tech transfer, I think, from Germany. And pinag-aralan nila yung technology. May reverse engineer nila yun. Okay. For, for us to reverse engineer, that means you have skilled persons who understand the system. Otherwise, 
uh, superficial yung pag-copy mo nung ano. Pero walang engineering. <laughs> Oo. Oh, reverse lang. Puro reverse lang. Puro reverse lang. Then, kaya makita ko ngayon, ano tawag ng South Korean sa kanila ngayon? What they call themselves. They are now the the new arsenal of democracy. Especially Kasi, Trump yan yung president nila ngayon. So may pagkaganyan, may may... No, they they're now supplying Ukraine to EU countries. Poland, I think Poland uh, is one of their biggest uh the customers. Yeah. Right? yeah. So they're actually ano eh yung yun yung tinasabi kong uh, yung they started with a local market but uh kinapasitate nila para mag-compete sa global market. Um But do you think, um, how should I put it? I mean, I, again, South Korea, these countries are known for really proactive industrial policy, a la Meti Japan and all of that. We can have a long conversation over that. Um, because there are some people are asking questions here about, for instance, the steel industry not, and how depressing things have turned. But I know the Gokong Ways, I, I think, are quite involved in the steel industry and they're not doing too bad. I think there are two or three uh, steel industry companies in the Philippines who have been defying all sorts of odds. Are we perhaps also underestimating our private sector's capability to engage in increasingly sophisticated and large-scale uh, you know, uh, manufacturing or industrial practices, including potentially defense industry practices down the road. Magaling sila sana eh, paggawa ng condominium, paggawa ng kung ano-ano, di ba? <laughs> But hopefully, you know, you want to you wanna move up the the ladder, right? Value chain. Oh, uh, kasi when you have an industrial base, merong supporting industries through ano din, the fact that in, so example, shipbuilding, of course, you mentioned about steel, but steel, ang, ang ano niyan, is nickel and ano pa rin eh, yung components of steel. Okay. So, I'm not sure, no? Uh, what is up the problem? With, ang problema, if you want to revive yung steel industry natin, I am guessing, no? I'm not expert on steel industry. It's, uh, it's, parang it's much cheaper to get it from abroad eh, rather than developing it locally. So I think that's a challenge. But if you're if you're willing to offset yung, ano na yun, yung, kumbaga yung lugi mo, just to make sure that you build your own steel industry, well, uh, Again, that will take a national government. Yeah. Uh, Kailangan ng guarantor dyan. It's imprimatory. Eh. Kumbaga, never mind if it's more expensive, but your steel goes to my shipbuilding uh, industry. Para ano siya, everything is sourced locally. Okay. So you limit yung vulnerability mo ng supply chain mo. Okay. Uh, like, for example, uh, you cannot produce this aircraft because yung chip non is sourced from abroad. So that becomes a supply chain vulnerability now. Thank you for that, uh, Admiral. I mean, the reason I'm also asking this is I, I just want to also understand how you folks with background in in Navy and you know naval sciences and marine engineering, etc., how you understand this issue of industrial policy. I mean, I had other guests uh, talking about industrial policy, development, etc. So I, I just want to see where where this is coming from. Um, now. Uh, Balikan natin yung question ko ulit dun sa asymmetric before we go to the Philippine-US alliance. Uh, do you think the Philippines should also develop is a kind of militias um, a la China? Yung mga kunyaring fisherman. I mean, do you think we have to tapatan sila in their own game or that's very dangerous because, you know, you're just giving them more excuse to escalate the situation and dominate? We tried that. Eh. It didn't work for us. Iba yung ano eh. Uh, it's a system issue. We don't have the same... Uh, yung kumbaga the base that we need that we need to work with is not the same as China so hindi siya sustainable uh, for example most of our major fishing companies do not actually fish in the South China Sea doon sila sa Pacific eh. doon sila nakadeploy so it's not for us to divert them to South China Sea that means we need we have to subsidize their operations here Pangalawa, uh, yung militia ng ano ng China, komunista nga sila eh. So kaya nilang i-press yung press gang yung mga yung mga citizens nila to perform these missions. Okay? Uh, but hindi naman natin pwedeng ipilit yung ating ano uh, mga fisher folks or those in the fish community to perform militia duties. Okay? And of course, pag may nangyari yan, may compensation na. So you're now going to the ano uh, an issue of uh, How do you now fund your personal services? That's auxiliary military, army. Yeah. 
So it gets it gets complicated. Now, can we go to the issue of the uh Philippine US alliance? Um so we discuss joint ventures with other countries, best lessons we can get from other developing countries. But ang gusto mong usapan dito, uh, Admiral is when it comes to our, I mean, after all, we're not alone, unlike Ukraine. But Ukraine didn't have any kind of alliance and all of that. And let's be honest, the reason na, uh, tumulong ang West sa Ukraine is because they showed resolve. I think had the Ukrainians not shown resolve, tapos na ang usapan, wala pang one week, tapos na. Diba? Na decapitate na yung buong leadership nila. It's only when they realized may laban na itong mga Ukrainians at tumalaban ng mga Ukrainians, they began to invest in them, right? So the, the West was not just throwing money out of nowhere or throwing money at a sinking hole. They were also assessing how how far Ukrainians were willing to fight for that. And as we speak here, dito sa Cong- the US Congress, malaking debate about uh, should they continue with this. Now, speaking of that, when it comes to Philippine-US alliance, what do you think is the optimal, reasonable, and realistic um, division of labor dito? I say in terms of strike capabilities, diba? the Americans have that. Because, you know, I was just talking to some folks here and, you know, one of the conversation is should the Philippines also develop counter strike capability, the ability to hit yung mga base nila dyan sa fire cross, dyan sa uh, sandy cay, dun sa mga uh, sa mga areas na inoccupy nila to paralyze their ability to threaten us, di ba? Parang ano yun, di ba? Parang sa sa boxing yan, if you have this range, you can counter punch right to try to get near to you. Um, or should we just outsource this to the Americans in terms of the counter strike capability and all and then focus tayo dun sa proactive defense. I mean, what what is the optimal um, balance we're looking at here in terms of division of labor? Should things go ugly, really, uh, with China down there? Okay. Uh, there's such thing as ano eh, deconflicting yung space. Okay, So mer- there's such thing as airspace management. There's also a need to also manage yung space in terms of conflict. Para hindi kayo magbungguan. Yeah, parang... Hindi kayo magbungguan. Kasi kung maka... Pag nandito, lahat ng nasa kanan nitong linya, process namin yan. Lahat ng sa kaliwa ng linya, sa inyo yan. So, kumbaga, bahala na kayo lahat dyan. So, that's one of looking at it. So, if we look at it in terms of managing battle space, pwede natin sabihin yung in terms of division of labor. Anything outside of, let's say, the 12 nautical mile territorial waters natin, moving towards the South China Sea, sige, bahala na kayo dyan. Mm. We will focus on defending the archipelago. Yung, ano, yung archipelago. Okay. Uh, and our archipelagic trade. So that's one way of looking at it. Uh, the second one, if, if you really want to develop an organic domestic capability, balik tayo ulit sa Ukraine-Russian conflict. Okay. Ano ba yung ginawa ng Ukraine sa Sebastopol? Yung naval base ng Russia doon. Okay. They use drones. So yung counter strike capability nila they use also drones for that. Uh which is cheap, it, which is affordable, right? Cheaper, no? Cheaper. So for example, sa Spratly's group of islands, tatlo lang naman yung major bases nila diyan eh. Fiery Cross, uh sa Mischief, tsaka yung sa ano. Pag other one. Na may harbor. And we can, let's say, for example, sa pag-asa, we can deploy, redeploy drones there. Okay? Doon sa Ayunin Shoal, the much contested Ayunin Shoal, we can deploy drones there. Okay? Itong drones natin dito sa Ayunin, ang target niya palagi is cheaper. Kasi konting, konting distansya na lang, pwede ka na doon. Eh. Okay? So, pwedeng ganun if uh, you want to develop counter-strike capability. But, ang ano kasi, militarily yung occupied isles and feature nila doon is not defensible we are in the same boat as practice eh. even our features of course obviously are not defensible militarily so they are more of a political statement eh. ito yung moho natin na nilagay because we're saying that is part of our real estate okay uh, I, and i'm going to put this moho there para to show na I mean, yan, we're claiming that. Okay. So yung yung troops natin saka yung facilities natin doon are mohon. But if you're saying uh employing them uh, or defending them militarily, of course, medyo ano yon, med- that's a different proposition altogether. Um speaking of the Philippine US alliance, I mean, uh how should I put it? 
I mean, as we speak, they're talking about, I don't know, how, how many billions of dollars, 50, 40 billions giving to Ukraine. I understand the situation in Ukraine. And then you're talking about, of course, the ongoing conflict in, in, in the Middle East. Um, well, in this case, you're talking about the U.S. ally, which is one of the most advanced countries on, on Earth, in especially in military terms. So the question here is, um, shouldn't the U.S. actually step it up a little bit, considering the Philippines is up against someone like China? Don't you think that, of course, I'm not drawing exact parallel with Ukraine, but I mean, just look at how far the Philippine Coast Guard, the Philippine Navy has gone in terms of pushing back against China, against in terms of standing its ground in uh, uh, situations, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Second Thomas Shoal. Don't you think we have shown enough resolve and seriousness and reliability um, to to make the Americans think now we're also worth investing in? Although, of course, thank God we're not in a total war situation like what Ukraine is. But clearly, there's there's that dynamic, right? They're going to invest in you if they see you're willing to fight for yourself. I mean, you cannot be holier, more Catholic than the Pope, right? I mean, they cannot fight it more. Because I remember this very well, uh, Admiral. There was an American Admiral. I gave a talk here in Washington, D.C. a few years ago. And we were talking about Scar Barshall, at blah, blah, blah. And then <laughs> Savinia, we cannot want to fight more for Panatak Shol or Scar Barshall than your, your president. We're talking about, of course, Mr. Jetski. Right? You know, when, when you have a Filipino president saying, wala tayo makagawa, sabi ng Amerikano, edi, iyo pala eh, kung wala makagawa, ba ba't kayo maasa sa amin, napoprotektahan kayo, eh kayo na nga, hindi kayo lumalaban para sa sarili nyo. Well, at least, thank God, we don't have that kind of president anymore or leadership. But you, you get what I'm saying, right? I mean, this is, this is where I disagree with folks who say, Salamat kay Digong, sineseryoso tayo na America. But there was a lot of cost to having Digong around, right? It made uh, He made us look like a banana republic. There was a lot of delay in terms of de developing bilateral capabilities. And I would argue, kahit siguro bakanteng ano lang, uh, chair ang nilagay mo sa Malacanang, the U.S. has no choice but to take us more seriously because of our geography and the situation with China, right? Regardless of, this is really about our our geopolitical position, right? Um, but then again, I mean, should we push more for for the Americans? I mean, we're, we're talking about tens of billions of dollars given to some countries that have already one of the most advanced militaries in the world and are up against, I don't know, some terrorist organization here and there. Um, well, in the case of Philippines, we're up against the biggest navy on earth. I just see some asymmetry in a bad sense there, right? I mean, or am I being, am I expecting too much? I mean, how should we put it? Okay, number one, I, and I may get into trouble, no? Kasi in an, another program I mentioned, I said, let's not rely too much on the Americans. No? I think, number one, we need to look at yung sarili mo na natin. Kasi if you're not willing to fight for your own country, how how can you expect other countries to fight for you. So you basic units. Uh, if you are not able to defend your national interests, don't ask the Americans to fight for us. Uh, para, ano, eh, that's uh, ridiculous. Eh. But hindi natin control yung ano, eh, and you're there in Washington, D.C. And I think you're at the heart of a very controversial debate about where the money should go. Kasi ang conversation diyan ngayon is why are we why are we supporting Ukraine why are we supporting Israel we need to uh, invest money to protect yung southern border nila to Mexico because of illegal migration so that's a partisan debate that's ano eh. so my so point is that they're saying we should also focus on China in the Pacific and Asia, because that's the real deal. That's also, I mean, I had, for instance, Elbridge Colby, who was the yeah. architect, you know, on my show before. And and he's the guy who's saying, we should focus on China. China is really the the the, the major uh, concern and threat to the United States. Yeah, I agree with you. I also read your tweets in Elbridge Colby. It, Colby would be the right person if the Republicans are in power. So they're Democrats. Democrats are the one in power. Eh? So it's basically a voice in the wilderness that they in terms of the strategic community in uh, Washington, D.C. But uh, one alternative is if we cannot do it alone and the Americans are distracted, because we have to accept that they are distracted with other global issues. And uh, we are competing for ano, eh, yung para pansinin tayo. And uh, either we get a better lobby... Nasa linya tayo. Or we need to... Be we, have a, we need a better way of packaging ourselves or Southeast Asia. 
So we need to accept na America is distracted with other issues globally. Uh, and as much as they want to focus on East Asia, uh, the dynamics both the global and the domestic politics uh, are, are, are causing them to veer away from, uh, from this region and focus on China. Okay, so that's one. So, the, so ang ano natin is, uh, hindi naman tayo, iiyakan na lang natin yun. We look for alternatives. And I think th- that means, uh, doon papasok yung we need to diversify our alliances and partnerships. Not only rely on the Americans, but look at other countries, particularly let's say Japan or India, or maybe Australia, who, who are also on the same boat as us. But ang kagandaan nun, they are also part of the barangay. Kasi ang problema sa Amerika, hindi siya member ng barangay natin. Ano siya eh, uh, he, he, America is not a resident power in East Asia. Dumadalaw lang siya. But we're dealing with India or Japan. They're in Guam, they're in Guam which is like four hours flight from Manila. Right? I mean, they have bases in Japan and Korea. I mean, I, I see what you're saying, but I think we have to be careful about that argument. That's what the Chinese always use. Oh, the Americans are external powers. But last time I checked, Guam, that's an American territory. I think 50% are Pinoy. I love them, my fellow Ilocano. So they are a resident power, I would say. They're not a nation power, but they're in the Pacific power. They are a Pacific power, aren't they? Well, well you're correct there. Ang inano ko lang is, ano eh, uh, because they have other global interests or gl- global uh, commitments. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, hindi talaga tila makapag-focus, sure. even if they want to. Even if they want to. Hindi talaga. And that's why uh, one of the drivers of instability in the region is yung what I call the re- regional naval balance of power. Uh, yung China is able to concentrate its forces dito sa East Asia. But uh, America has different various uh, naval fleets that deployed everywhere. But yung barko to, that is yung laman ng fleets na yon, they just shift from one fleet to another. Eh. So as much as they have the seven fleet here, uh, hindi rin siya maka-concentrate lang dito sa region na ito. Now, that's a good point. Kaya nga sabi ko, we have to be also careful with this propaganda na, oh, U.S. has the biggest defense budget in the world, blah, blah, blah. They're really... And I said, but U.S. is a global power. They have to, you know, slice the pie between how many, you know, oceans. Well, well China is still primarily an Asian power. And then, to a certain degree, they're expanding their tentacles, Djibouti here and there, diba? So, totally different situations. Not to mention, of course, if you use proper economic measures like purchasing power parity, China's defense budget may be close to six hundred billion, right? Assuming we're even counting the real budget, and dami mga hindi din declare. So, uh, this is very correct that the Chinese they can concentrate themselves as a regional power, dito sa theater, while the United States, as of now, may not be in that position. And actually, there was just a research that came out from the Congressional Research Services that shows that the U.S. at best can fight, what, one and a half major conflicts simultaneously, like barely two, right? And I'm already looking at the map, and it's like one in Ukraine, one in the Middle East right now, uh, you know, because you have also, you know, I'm not talking about Hamas, and you know, I'm talking about other major regional powers there, and Russia and China also have an interest there. And then here, China. So they're talking about three theaters of potential conflict, right, uh, in the near future. So that, that's why we're having this conversation. But then again, I mean, Admiral, I, I understand your caveats and, and your efforts to, I don't know, how should I put it, Um. For to help us to have reasonable expectations about things, it's a, sorry, it's eleven thirty p.m. I'm not at my sharpest, but I hope I'm making sense here. Ang 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 tanong ko lang dito is ano yung baseline dapat natin with the United States, and I think this is my segue to the last part of our conversation at least for today, and hopefully we'll have more of this, um, because as we speak, the Americans are seeking for more access to Batanes, more of our nor- northern bases. My understanding is that some of the bases in the north may be HADR supposedly, but there are also facilities there to accommodate fighter jets. I mean, we have some very precious things that are on the table right now, which Marcus Jr. has not fully green lighted. Uh, so my understanding is that, you know, you know, even between allies, there has to be some sort of reciprocity, right? I mean, definitely between allies, you know, as we allow the Americans to have more presence in the North vis-a-vis Taiwan, that's a very risky thing for us. And I understand why BBM is very equivocal about it, just to be nice about a nice, I mean, strategic ambiguity, if I can put it that way. What is your take on that? I mean, what should be the baseline from the US? I, I, I completely agree that we should not rely on America, 
But at the end of the day, Admiral, iba yung treaty ally eh. Iba yung, you know what I'm saying, partner, strategic partner. I mean, whatever you want to call them, comprehensive strategic partner, right? All of these terminologies that Vietnam has for different countries, right? Iba pa rin yung treaty ally eh. It's, it's at a totally different level, right? So what should be the baseline expectation uh, we should develop is a video. Know, what is the thing that our en envoys here should negotiate for our ambassadors? I mean, let's say, bukas tayo nag-replace kay hindi, mahal natin si Ambassador Romualdez. But let's just say, in theory, you and I became the ambassador tomorrow here. Anong mga baselines na dapat i-target natin to to get out of our alliance? Um, in a reasonable way, that is actually also good. I mean, because U.S. security is also tethered to our security. So if we're not secure, we cannot defend ourselves. Problema din sa kanila yan. So, I'm just wondering, what should be the baseline there in terms of the Philippine-US alliance? Okay, a problem which are with the baseline is uh, the baseline is defined by yung politics natin, domestic politics. Natin. Mm -hmm. If it's only purely on uh, military strategic conversation, madali ilatag yun. Kasi it's just, ililista mo yung capabilities mo, ano yung ililista mo yung requirements mo. So, when we define the alliance, the Philippine-US alliance, in terms of uh, a corporate relation. Ano yung equity ng partners eh? Ang equity ng US is yung capabilities niya eh. Ang equity natin dito is real estate. Basically, it's real estate. Okay. Now, ang question dito is uh, in terms of the baseline, how much of our, the real estate are we willing to partake uh, as part of our relation of the, of the engagement? Uh, and at what level of control do we... Ano, uh, allow yung real estate natin gamitin. So it all still access. Oh, it, kasi let's say ideal. Let's say ideal muna. The ideal is we yung facilities natin can accommodate their forces at any given time. Okay? Uh, uh, they can they we, we they can surge their forces within the Philippine archipelago at let's say X number of days from the time na merong warning order. So that's the that's yung ano mo. And when you say accommodate, that means pag latag nila dito, we can house them, we can safely house them, and they are able to conduct uh, uh, multi-domain operations after they've arrived here X number of days, Y number of days. Parang ganon. Uh, then, of course, yung, yung location ng real estate. Kasi that may, real estates are important because they should be, be able to influence yung yung area that they were situated in. For example, if you're looking at Batanes, that means whatever is situated there, what is every, whatever is deployed there, it can influence Basi Channel Zone Street and radiate outwards to South China Sea and the Mid-Pacific. Okay. So yun yung ano doon, calculation. Na doon. So again, it's, it depends. Eh. Kasi if, if the, let's say for example, the scenario na controversial, something happens in Taiwan and the Americans ask us, can we use your bases to help Taiwan? Our answer would be a political answer because that would be based on the discernment of commander in chief or the president. We weigh in yung ano eh, yung ano eh, papayag ba ako hindi. And it's not a clean solution kasi may ano yan, merong automatic na negative ano yan, negative implications. So, again, yung baseline mo, would be dependent be dependent on how your political appreciation of commander chief and it can move right left or right depending on the situation you're being very diplomatic about this i, I mean i'm asking you as as a, as a military former military guy i mean what is okay i i understand there's the politics of it there's the operational military aspect of it but what is the marriage of the two like what is the if we split the difference, let's say a realistic level of political calculations and discussion, and then a reasonable level of military capability development. Because I am not in forever and hanging real estate na lang asset tay. We want to also be a capable uh, ally and partner, which can also actively contribute to international peace and security, right? Uh, at least in our immediate region, no anti piracy, counter terrorism, etc. Uh, not just in Mindanao, but beyond. Um, I mean, the U.S. has an interest in developing the capability of allies like the Philippines too, so that we can contribute to an international system that is more stable down the road. Okay. Uh, in that term, if you notice yung uh, bilateral security dialogue, yung, yung readout niya, 50% is on security and 50% is on economy. The reason being, I think, Vito, is babalik tayo sa kung 
conversation on industrialization. Eh. Kasi the only way we can be sustainably be able to work with the, in the under an alliance framework if we, if we capacitate ourselves. Hindi, naka de, hindi yung dependent. Hindi yung mendicant yung approach mo dun sa relationship or transactional. Okay. It should be, you know, uh, at some point, kaya natin i-defend yung sarili natin with their help but nakapacitate ang sarili natin. So, baseline doon is uh, they they need to help us develop our capabilities not just get yung buying from them equipment okay. kasi that's ano eh, uh, a business that's a business relationship not an alliance relationship okay. and of course mahal yung equipment nila eh kaya nga we're buying from uh, other countries eh which is much cheaper okay so yun uh, we mentioned about drones technology transfer and uh, siguro ano making the Philippines part of their military supply chain para we can draw on the same supply. Kasi meron mga basic yan. There are basic, basic equipment or simple equipment that can be common to us. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, we're, we're towards the, uh, you know, the, the, the last part of this episode. But before, because I, I want you also to remind yung ating mga kababayan ba't mahalaga ito. Pero I, I want you to also remind Siguro yung mga, mga Filipino-American community, how they can be helpful here, di ba? Kasi as we speak, the, the one reason why certain countries get billions of dollars of aid, even if they're developed and rich and all of that, is because there's a lobby. There's a powerful lobby that pushes for stronger bilateral security cooperations. Uh, the, the latest one is actually Indians. The Indian community and Indian-American community is very, very proactive, no? And that has been very uh, consequential in terms of elevating the latter relationship between India and U.S. And India is not even an ally of the U.S., right? And they're getting access to, you know, Airbus engine development capabilities, so on and so on. Um, but before that, um, atong Taiwan, can we can we go back to this issue of Taiwan? Because your your take on the Taiwan issue is quite quite unique. In fact, I would say that perhaps we're need an opposite, but. <laughs> I argued in certain articles that, uh, and in certain interviews that we could leverage the Taiwan linkage by, you know, essentially making clear to the Chinese that the more they bully us in West Philippine Sea, the more we give access to the Americans, but it could also work the other way. We can curb the American access in the North if in exchange in the West, the Chinese don't make uh, ex extra trouble. I mean, uh, how do you stand on that that linkage kind of game or calculus or do you think we should just push back on both fronts and there should be no compromise or I think if I remember maybe the the Taiwan issue is even more important at some point because we're talking about a giant island next to us not just small islands here um I think that's where you have some interesting take that I, I want to go back to okay um, um, best case scenario was just, just Taiwan is status quo eh? meaning it is what is now uh, minus, of course, yung tension in uh, the Taiwan Strait. Okay. So that's my best case scenario. My worst case scenario is uh, Chinese presence in Taiwan. Kasi now, Taiwan is essentially buffer state natin sa China. So if we lose Taiwan, then kapitbahay na natin si China. And our northern part, the northern part of the Philippines will be under threat. It will be under threat kasi Basi Channel is a strategic waterway. And uh, yung discernment natin dito it started when when China during the previous administration was trying to uh, invest in those certain areas in the northern Philippines. Na kami naman sa Navy nakita namin, oops, strategic yung ano niyan, yung placement niya. Uh, red flag yan, hindi pwedeng hindi tayo magsasalita. Kasi if they gain access to that, whether that is pseudo uh, foreign direct investment or whatever. Tourism yeah. naman daw, papagandahin nila gawa uh, ng casino. That, that will give them a footprint doon sa ating, ano, uh, ano. so medyo, nung nakita natin, ito na biro ko dyan eh, for yung, ano, yung, uh, those arguing against EDCA. Sabi ko, may EDCA rin yung China eh. Ang tawag nila ron, BRI. So, the point is, uh, we cannot afford a Taiwan that is, may Chinese presence. Okay. So anything that disrupts yung strategy nila on Taiwan that, that involves Basi Channel or Zone Street, I'm all for it. So if you do not want the Americans there, kasi that might be a driver for further conflict, 
the minimum we can do is deploy our own forces there and strengthen our position. Okay? And we can always claim naman na we have our own agency. Look, China, even if you claim that we are a U.S. puppet, that is our territory. Uh, responsible kami dyan. Uh, and we will protect that against you and even from the U.S. Just to make sure that it's peaceful. Okay. So that's the minimum that we can do. And last one, thank you very much for that. Um, Last one, do, do you have uh, some sort of just dun sa mga ating mga kababayan na siguro hindi nila na-appreciate. I, I, I got a lot of bashing online dun some of, some of the articles I wrote about itong 36 billion pesos. Siyempre, hindi nila binasa. Obviously, na this is over 10 years as a share of GDP. It's actually not that much. I mean, when you compare to the Philippines to a lot of our neighbors, we're way behind the curve, right? So, so for a GDP of almost $500 billion, half a trillion, spending 36 billion over 10 years considering the threat we're facing considering how far we have to catch up with things not only with china but even also with some of our peers in the region i mean i think i'm already answering the question but but i want it from you uh, admiral someone who who served in the navy whose family has served in the navy for a long time more than what half a century yung buong pamilya na involved dito sa navy can you just remind you mga kababayan natin bakit mahalaga itong modernization act and i know the context of our conversation because you know i'm sure you've heard even some of people including my guests you know some of them were skeptical some of them were like mm, i'm not sure you want to spend that much right uh baka naman email difficult lang ito or maging white elephant project store baka mama hardly ka fund ito diba? um what do you have to tell the the skeptics hey number one in an ideal world i would prefer that whatever money government has pupunta sa education sa health Anything that uh, would be good for the people. No? But we are not uh, living in a perfect ideal world. Eh? We are living in a very competitive region in East Asia. And we have seen the result of yung vacillation uh, or yung pagdadalawang isip natin in investing for our own defense. Ano yun? Uh, Scarborough, party group of Island. Kung hindi, mat hindi perfect yung neighborhood mo, then you have it is your responsibility to protect yourself. Now, yung cost niyan is something that is, uh, ano eh, iko, iko, ano mo yan eh, ano yung cost nun pag if we do not do that? Then we are surrendering yung country natin to yung whims and caprices of a third country. Uh, who has ambitions in the region? Eh, hindi naman tayo, ano eh, uh, Pilipino tayo pa ibang, and uh, history, his, our history is replete with uh, lessons of Filipinos fighting for our own freedom and fighting for our own uh, rights as citizens. So I think yung counting invest, county lang yun eh, compared to, ano, yung counting investment na yun is exactly. I think quite this. Right. I mean, we're not even spending 1.5% of our GDP, right? I mean, countries like US are spending, what, 3 to 4%. Russia is spending more than 4%. China is spending definitely more than 2%. I mean, we're like spending at EU level, or but, but you know, it's like, but we don't have one, one point something. Yeah, I mean, like, and and considering we are starting from a very low base, and and we're up against China. I mean, this is serious stuff. And hindi naman pwede na palate tayo maasa na lang sa sa America as we we discuss. Hindi naman pwede na magtatay digong style naman tayo na wala tayong magawa at magjetski na lang tayo. So you know, we have to find a reasonable way of dealing with this. And Hindi tayo si serious na yung bansa kung wala kang matinong you know modern, de ba? Um. Uh, Military or armed forces, uh, and as as we discussed, we see Mike Loiko among others from AFP, Colonel Loiko. You know, we want to have a kind of a twenty first century modern armed forces, not not the best in the world, but at least a modern capable one. Um, what about some of Philippine American community? Is there is there an advice that maybe they should be more involved in pushing for more American support for the Philippines modernization? Siguro yung mga F sixteen fighters, gawin nila mas mura, mas affordable, na pagkamahaling binibenta nila sa atin, ituloy na punta tayo sa Sweden. Anong ano masasabi natin dyan? Well, siguro, ano, keep the burn, the fire burning in terms of yung, yung visibility ng Pilipinas dyan sa, ano. Kasi ang laro, ang, ang, ang larangan kasi dyan, domestic politics yung, 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 uh, anyway. so, be a voice of uh, be a constant voice of reminding your congressmen or senators uh, uh, to look after the you know, Southeast Asia and the Philippines. On that note, uh, thank you very much. Uh, 
Admiral Ong, Professor Ong uh, from Ateneo de Manila University. Asog, di ba? School of Government po. Uh, Professor Ong, uh, Professor of Practice at the Ateneo School of Government. Thank you so much for that discussion. I think we, we went a little bit too log into logistics. That's, I think, what real experts do. Amateurs do more like, you know, grand strategy. So I think uh, people would appreciate that, Admiral Ong. Um, uh, Admiral, are there um, uh, certain articles? I mean, of course, I know, but, you know, for the purpose of audience that you, you want people to check, uh, especially your thoughts on asymmetric warfare, etc. Things that siguro mas maganda kung binasa niyo yung mga sinulat niyo na available to the public for free, of course. Um, are there certain things that you want to flag there um, for people to check? So I'm still writing one. I will be writing one on purely it's archipelagic strategy. So hintayin niyo na lang. Uh, of course, some of your pieces on on thought leaders on Rappler, right, among others, has has touched on this issue. So I really suggest guys to check that. Not to mention also, if you go to just YouTube and you know just put Hey Darian and Admiral Ong, uh, some of our previous conversations comes in First Island Chain, Second Island Chain, some of the more other issues that hindi na namin inulit dito. So you can check them out. But I look forward, Admiral, to catching up with you, perhaps at a better time, as far as my time is concerned. Um, at uh, maraming salamat, Admiral, for for putting aside, uh, you know, precious time from your weekend and morning uh, with us. Uh, I can see a lot of people showing a lot of appreciation dito sa ganitong discussion. So hindi ito kasing kalog ng mga iba, like yung usapan namin ni Ronald Liamas. Hindi ito mga usapan glutatayon or usapan kalokohan. Um, this is serious stuff. This is matters of war and peace, right? It 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 gets it gets grim, but but thank you so much, Admiral, for for making it as accessible and as as authoritative as it should be. Because I okay ma pa amateur discussions lang. So thank you so much, Admiral, and hope to, uh, hope to have you again with us for more discussions. Pag gusto mo rin magano, usapan gluta tayo na. Pwede naman. Exactly. Pag research mo na. Yun nga eh, baka, baka magpa-drip mo daw muna, magpa-drip muna daw si, si Admiral and then uh, pag-usapan natin ng skincare. On that note, God bless and talk to you soon. Mabuhay po, Admiral. Good night.